Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to never lose at Civ 6 by showing you the ultimate Civ 6 strategy. So we're going to just create our own game here. We'll be, we'll be Alexander the Great because this is one of the, there's many different ways to pull off the strategy. You can really do it with any civilization, but it's really fun to do it with Alexander and it will make your friends extra mad because this is a warring Civ. So we'll just play on Prince, we'll do online speed just so we can get this off as fast as possible uh continents is fine i guess you can really do whatever whatever you want and we'll do small just so that this doesn't take as long and standard disaster and we're going to turn off turn timer because i dislike it if you win your game of civilization because of score you have really lost more in ethics and morals than you have won in civ 6 victory this building our unique building lets us gain 25% unit production as science when a new unit is produced. And that is going to be a big part of where this strategy comes into effect when playing as Macedonia. So we have a pretty unfortunate start here in the middle of the jungle. We're going to try up, oh, but there's the coastline right there. And what we're really going to want to do is start on the coast. Playing an archipelago probably would be the best possible situation because you'd never really end up with a bad start because what we want here are these fishable resources so we can sell right here on the coast which will give us the sailing eureka bonus which is going to help us get those fishing boats up even faster and for now we can just set our warrior to explore oh and we found this is actually another really important thing we found a religious city-state which is going to help us get a pantheon sooner than anybody else, which is just going to let us be even more powerful. Now, normally what you'd want to do is get your astrology going, so that way you can get a holy site. But because we have this religious city-state, we're getting two faith per turn right off the bat. So we'd already have our pantheon before we'd even have a holy site ready to go. And that's all we really need to get this strategy fully in place. So it'd be more efficient for us to just research sailing and get our worker going that way we can get all of these lovely crab resources as soon as possible. And so now on turn nine, we are finally ready to create our Pantheon, which is what we've been waiting the entire game to do, all nine turns of it. This is actually one of the fastest turns I've been able to get this Pantheon going, especially considering we didn't even settle our city on turn zero. That's pretty amazing. We also discovered the Ottomans and there are some barbarians up here just to show you the state of where we are in the world. So now, this is why it was really important to get those fishing resources, because we're going to want to get God of the Sea. And this is where the most important part of this whole strategy comes up. As you can see, we have 12 faith. We're going to use that to purchase this Pantheon. But we don't want to just purchase the Pantheon once. We want to run a, we want to run a tab to the gods. We're going to owe these gods some now, but it's going to pay off later. So as you can see, the menu is still opened. When we hit found this Pantheon and hit escape, the menu stays opened. And as you can see, we're still paying our debts to the gods. But we can continue to get this Pantheon. As you can see, I only got the Pantheon a few times. But that's why we dropped a save before. So that's how you do it. But let me show you how you really take advantage of the situation. So as you can see, we have 149 pantheons found, which is about enough. We've paid, we're in pretty deep debt with the gods, but next turn you're going to see what happens when we finally fish up these crabs that we've got over here. I also got us two settlers and two builders, that was also part of the glitch, just by glitching the pantheon beliefs that give you a settler and a builder, that way we can just sort of spread we can spread our wealth of Pantheon knowledge farther around our continent. And then we'll just build ourselves a monument to get us started. A monument to this lovely thing that we're doing here. And we'll just move these units down. Maybe there'll be some fish that they can gather down there. Uh, we could we could sit on this one tile over here. There's fish there and fish there. Pepe might just want to do that. Move them there for now. Who really cares? These are these are free settlers we got anyway. And then the builders. This builder will be our sea builder. And we'll just build wherever. Because, you know, <laughs> it's not really going to matter in a very short period of time. We'll just move him over there. 
just to keep the game rolling. As you can see here, we are going to start fishing this tile for one food, half of a house, and 145 production. This is absolutely marvelous. And now we can pretty much build anything we want in one turn. Even in the late game, because as you can see, there are still two more crabs here. Which means we will have that 145 production times three. Which means that basically any stage in the game, we will pretty much be able to build whatever we want in just a single turn. Steal every wonder from every other civilization who ever wanted to build anything. Or from your friends. So we're getting ourselves set up here, we have three different cities, each one with its own good source of sea resources. This city's got two crabs and a fish. Our original city, of course, had its three crabs, and this new city has three fish along the lines right here. This fish is just a few tiles too far away, but we could get it from this city right here. So this city could actually have four fish in total, making it able to produce everything in still one turn but just faster in one turn. Just because we wanted to go as much overkill as we possibly can. So at this point you kind of just want to, because there's not really anything to build yet, just keep building warriors, you'll have yourself the world's largest standing army in, you know, 3000 BCE, because warriors actually have zero maintenance cost. So you can just kind of build as many of those as you want, and you could probably just take any nearby civilizations. We only really see the Ottomans, they're around here somewhere. But for now, we're going to really just want to start by rushing these, this bronze working so we can get the encampment and our unique building in it. Because the unique building is what's going to let us take all this production, have the largest military, and also the best science gains to give us the strongest units, despite probably not even building any campus districts in this civilization. Even We're going to know everything better than everybody else, strictly through war. And I think that's the way Alexander the Great always imagined it would be done anyway, so... Sounds about right to me. As you can see, we can fend off any barbarian invaders because we do have a very strong military. Oh, the Ottomans. We should just say goodbye to them. We don't want to lure them into a false sense of security. That would just be rude of us. We should be, we should be frank about what we're doing here. We've unlocked foreign trade. We're probably not going to be doing a lot of that unless if you count trading our swords with their heads, but I guess that can technically be considered foreign trade if you want to think about it like that. We're still in deep debt to the gods, but, you know, in a few thousand years, I'm sure they'll forget about it. All right, now we've unlocked bronze working, which is nice. That means, first of all, we can finally build something, because we couldn't really build anything before. Oh, and we still... no suitable location. Oh, can't be adjacent to the city center. Do we have money to- oh, perfect. Alright, there we go. We'd only been expanding our cities into the oceans to be closer to our gods of the sea. But, only 25 gold and we've got that completely taken care of. That's what an encampment looks like when it only has one turn to be built, folks. Alright, so with our encampment down, we can finally build the Paldeus. The most important building to the entire Macedonian strategy. So as you can see, it gives combat experience, blah blah blah, not really that important. But what it really is, is gain science equal to 25% of the unit's cost when non-civilian units are created. Which essentially means any military unit, not a settler, worker, probably an archaeologist as well. Anything that really does combat damage. So we can build that in one turn. And then all of those units that we're building in one turn, 25% of that is going to go straight into science. So we quickly get some late game boats, because you can see this quadream, 120 production. So that's going to be 25 science every turn. With all of our encampments up, and all of our specialty buildings up, we can start building three quadreams per turn at 24 science, mm, like 26 science a piece. We're going to be, wow, basically... 10 times the amount of science we're getting now per turn just in making these military boats. We should really start researching the next boat, the Caravel. It'll take us 30 turns, but not really. It'll only take us three turns really to research this, just the cartography. And there's only six things before it. I think it'd probably be worth doing. 
Jumping back in a few turns later, we have the world has finally entered into the classical age. And because we got so many error points for finding 150 pantheons, we now, entering the classic age, have 182 error points. Which means our life has been a few, you know, important moments over the last few turns, but really in that time when our people just they believed and believed and they just kept on believing and they thought that if they believed just a little bit harder and a little bit longer and if they just kept on believing then the gods would just would just keep bestowing their bounties on them and they continued to believe even after that worked because they thought that maybe it would work again and, and it did and then it kept on working and then eventually they started to get a little bit tired but they kept on believing until they fell asleep and then the gods left them forever. But after bestowing their gifts upon mankind, they were able to they'll, they'll be able to use those gifts forever. So we can finally, as you can see the, the Ottomans, they didn't do so hot. In the same turn that the world entered the classical era, we actually got into the medieval era. Able to build dams and the Hagia Sophia. The same time the people are learning you know, what money is. We learned what money was years ago. We're years ahead of them in knowing what things are, despite being Alexander the Great compared to these people, whoever they are. So at this point in the game, we could probably go out and destroy any coastal sieves with our enormous boat army that is so vast it could really just lay waste to anyone that we found. Unfortunately, we haven't really found any coastal civilizations yet, only city-states. Uh, you could conquer city-states if that's your thing. I'm going to save my boat army to keep... They're all just automatically exploring, sniffing for targets right now. But until then, we'll just have to wait. And we're back in with Alexander the Great for another quick update. We're on turn 39 in 1050 BCE. We have just finished researching cartography. Cartography has been discovered in 1050. That has put us firmly, firmly into the Renaissance era of the game on turn 39. And the Caravel, which has double the production of the Quad Dream, will, even, will now start basically doubling our science. Our science still 1050, comparing that to or er, not 10.50, sorry, 15.6. Which is actually still rather high for every other nation that we know of so far. Which is very interesting because we don't actually have a single campus district. As you can see, we have two great merchants because I've just kind of been pumping out uh, commercial grants, commercial investments, which just get us a bunch of early game great person points so you can pretty much steal all the early great people for any districts you've already built but we're going to start doubling our science and we're already light years ahead of everyone else in the renaissance era we have a lot of uh, you know texts that we still haven't researched we still don't know what a horse is we don't know how to farm extra well despite our extreme you might call it devotion to the sea gods we still don't really know what a religion is yet maybe one of these days we'll figure that out who knows maybe not we also don't really know what a water mill is but we understand how to sail the ocean and find victims for our insane boat navy maybe we'll even find norway and pit boat navy versus boat navy we don't know how like to construct a harbor or a lighthouse to really help our boats but that's kind of why our boats have just started wandering all around the world in makeshift triple armadas. But it's finally time to start researching some of these smaller things, perhaps. Maybe we can start farming our, uh, maybe we can start farming our citruses and our spices if we learn how irrigation works. And I feel like that's enough for the Renaissance era now. Let's get, let's get back to it. Just keep on pumping out caravels now. And we have completed the first circumnavigation of the entire world in 750 BCE. It happened just like it did in real life. The complete 
Circumno, we have proved that the Earth is round, and it's not even the common area. This strategy, perfectly balanced in case if anyone was wondering, no one would ever get mad at you for using this strategy in any way whatsoever. Let's check, you know, let's just check where we are. We've got double, we've got almost double culture over our science. And, uh, and here is where we are in culture, still a little bit ahead, just, just a little bit ahead. Not really sure how we're ahead, but we are. Yeah, it might just be really bad. But in science, ooh, we got some, mwah, some beautiful science. We were a little side-brained earlier. We're better now. We're, we're working on walls still. The concepts of walls are a little weird for us. I'm not sure how we built all these buildings, but you know, it, it, it's interesting. But our boats, still the most magnificent boats ever, going towards that Venetian arsenal, which is actually really good for the strategy because it will double your boat production, which I believe also doubles that science production. So in that, is this for all cities? Receive a second naval unit in, each time you train a naval unit must be built on a coast. Yeah, I believe that's for all cities. So it will double all of our science gains basically forever, as long as we're building naval units, which is already the most efficient strategy for this. Cause like next we could just in one more tech be building frigates, which is not a ton better. It's only 40 production better. So it's only gonna really be uh, about 10 more science per turn, but that's per turn per city. So it would end up being about 30 more science per turn, which normally would be really good. I'd say 30 science per turn, that's insane, especially this early in the game. But based on what we're already getting, it's not a huge increase uh, until we get to the next one, which is the ironclad. But you need to run all the way up through industrialization to get that first anyway. But then that's 380, which is close to like 80 science per turn per city. But until then, we still have our boat armies exploring the world completing the circumnavigation. Honestly, we probably should have done this on Earth, because it would have been a lot cooler to be able to like know exactly what things are gonna look like. We'll still run in a tab to the gods. We'll probably be running that tab for a while, because we never end up building a holy site or anything to really give us science, or not science, faith, as most of our faith still comes from Jerusalem, which we are the Suzerian of. So we, we do get some bonuses that get us up to the five, the five faith per turn. But we might just be holding this debt to the gods for the entire, our entire lives. But you know what? We don't really have a religion or any holy sites anyway, so it's not like the tax collectors can really, can really come from anywhere. At this point, it's either just going to be nukes or rockets to Mars. And because this is a strategy that you should be using against your friends, it'd be way more fun if we showed you the nukes route. Because when you nuke somebody, you can just one tap take their city. And there's nothing more fun than that. But until then, it's back to the boats. And we have just turned the era over to the common era, ushering in the World Congress, the first ever World Congress meeting. What hot button issues will we discuss with all the other world leaders? Everything that we wanted happened. We have so many extra trade routes that despite spending so much gold, on our military, we still have probably the largest treasury known to mankind ever at this point in the game. We've finally gotten that Venetian arsenal up on our coastal island city that we made. So this will just become a new hub for pumping out double the boats just to speed up everything. Although I believe the boats get doubled in every city. I guess we can find out in, in one turn. Let's just say it. Carabelles all around. Oh, yep. Wow. Oh, boy. Eight caravels per turn. Anyone want industrialization? 200 CE. All right, well, have have fun, all you boats. Go out and go out and go on some nice adventures. Have some nice grand adventures, all of you. Oh, these... That's right, my capital has the... The capital has that governor, so everyone there gets a, a promotion before they set off on their adventures. If these barbarians ever stepped foot to the water, the Macedonian piranha caravels would just swarm no matter where they are. We have our reach in every, in every stretch of the ocean.
so the boats kind of got a little overwhelming as soon as the Venetian arsenal got built. We upgraded to privateers, but because we're making eight boats a turn, just setting them all to automate, they've kind of clustered. I'm not sure if it's a problem with the AI, but the boats are starting to cluster and only really moving like one tile per turn. Like this thing has six movement. Okay, so that one moved. But like ones like this, they would come right out of the harbor and then just like go into this gulf here for no real reason. I wonder if they're gonna, yeah, like it only moves one tile just into this other part of the gulf. And then all of these freshly built ones, oh, this one can't move because it's got a promotion. Because we're just going to keep, it's just going to keep getting worse as we set eight privateers every turn. This might, we might have gotten a start that was so good that we just kind of are going to, our military is just going to become so strong that it can't even move and we're just going to win by suffocation. With these ranged privateers there's still not really any coastal raidings we can do because we don't have a land based army so we couldn't take that capital we can't take this capital which is like right here pretty much we can't even see it got Machu Picchu over there can't take is it no we can't take the English capital because that's too many tiles in the Aztecs right in the middle here so we have to wait until we just unlock those thermonuclear devices, which is actually coming in pretty quick. A few turns ago, it was 26 techs away because there were a few techs that at this point in the game were re relatively cheap techs. So because we are doing a science dump, it is able to complete techs during the turn. So we can actually bypass the limitation of other science exploit strategies where you can only research one tech per turn because it's based off of having a really high science per turn and not having science resource dumps. So we have a tech during the turn still. We put a bunch of science value into our current research, which completes the tech during the turn and then moves on to the next tech where we push the research from this turn's you know science dump that we got during the turn and completes that tech and I saw one or two turns where we actually researched three techs at once for early game era techs, which makes it actually pretty useful to get higher techs first and then push like all of these techs in two turns. Just look at this. Look at how far ahead we are compared to everyone else in the world. And it's not like we're attacking them and making them weaker. They just, this is where we should be in 500 AD. We should be in, well, we probably should be more in like the Renaissance. These people seem to be doing not as great in science or culture. I think it's just the fact that they look at me and go, man, how is he, how is, how is Alexander the Great so much smarter and more civilized than I am? And they just get confused and they spend so much time sitting around thinking about that, that they just don't ever get anything done. Quick update, I decided to steal Machu Picchu, make it the coastal Machu Picchu, so that way nobody else could have it. Yep, that's all. So I just completed the Terracotta Army, which gives every single one of my units a promotion. Which is gonna take forever to give every single one of- These are just the boats that are around my cities. If I want to give every single one of my boats a promotion, that's gonna take forever and they can't automate when they have promotions available. And so it's just paying me for all of my different boats. And this was a clear mistake because now all, my, all of my boats require a promotion. And that, that's just gonna, this is just gonna take a long time. But you know, it might just be faster to delete everything that's not a privateer at this point because I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to adjust every single boat anyway. I should just start deleting all of my non privateers, which will also make room in the ocean. And then hopefully my boat because all my privateers are most of them are getting stuck and are finally working their way out. We finally did it. We've upgraded all of our ships. 
we've sold all of our lower level non-privateer ships. Our gold is now 307 increase per turn. Our military took a big hit. It was 6,000 strength before. It is now only 2,400. Still clear lead over all of these, you know, 200 average 300. We did lose more than half of our army strength. We lost a lot of vision because now all of our privateers are going to have to go and fill up this space that we used to have. I think it's fair to say that's probably the most bonuses anyone has ever gotten in the history of Civilization VI from the Terracotta Army. That took me like 10 minutes just to upgrade all these. I feel like I'm developing carpal tunnel in my wrist. We are just past the 100 turn mark and looking at the victory conditions, it looks like we're about to accidentally win a cultural victory. Not entirely sure how that happened. Probably just the AI forgetting to build amphitheaters. Yeah, yeah.